Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more relationship stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, that subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. Well, let's crack on with today's first story. Now, I just want to give you a warning that today's first story covers drug addiction issues. There's also a brief mention of rape in there as well. So it's covering really strong topics today. If you'd like to skip this story, please feel free to do so. Timestamps are down in the description below. And as always, please look after your mental health. That's so important. And let's get into the story. Now, today's first story comes from a deleted user who says, how do I, 26 female, tell my husband, 31 male, I'm addicted to drugs. Backstory. My husband and I have been married for almost five years. He's amazing. I know everyone says that, but he really is an incredible person. He's a great husband, treats me well. He's supportive and loving, and just everything I need him to be. I think I'm a pretty good wife to him as well, with the exception of this one thing. I'm absolutely terrified to tell my husband I'm addicted to amphetamines and I need help and he deserves to know what his wife is doing, but I can't bring myself to say the words. I don't want to be a source of stress or anxiety for him. I'm worried about how this could change his opinion of me or our relationship. I'm obviously ashamed of myself too. I think the idea of facing reality and giving up the drugs is part of it as well. I'm unable to control this anymore. I bought meth for the second time this month, despite swearing to myself I wouldn't do it again. I take dangerously high doses of Adderall and Dextrin. I've lost weight. My BMI was on the lower end of normal to begin with and I'm borderline underweight now. My eyes look sad. I'm sleepy whenever I'm not high. I feel absolutely horrible about myself and I'm really scared. I love him so much. I feel like a liar for keeping this from him. At the same time, I'm worried about what it will do to him. He knows something is up. He's a firefighter paramedic and interacts with people on drugs often, so I wouldn't be surprised if it's crossed his mind. I'm fairly good at hiding it though. I limit my use to nights he's at work. We spend time together. Our sex life is fine. He's pretty busy because he helps with his father's business, in addition to working. He really is amazing. It's possible he has no idea I'm about to drop this on him out of nowhere. If anyone has been in this position or has advice, I'd like to hear it and I appreciate you sharing. I honestly don't know what to say or how to begin the conversation. He's home today and I want to get it over with. I want to cry every time I look at him. Edit. This is complicated by the fact that my only real friend where we live uses these drugs. My relationship with her has to end and I'm a little sad about it. She's more involved than I am and doesn't plan to stop anytime soon. There's no option but to go our separate ways. I'm probably looking for excuses to avoid talking to him too. And we do have a couple of updates on this post as well. And I think, you know, you just have to tell him. Otherwise, what's the alternative that this drags on for the foreseeable future, which is no good for yourself. And I've got no doubt that this is going to be incredibly difficult for both of you, you know, you to be able to tell him and then, you know, deal with what you are dealing with. And also for him to have this, like you say, bomb dropped on him. But I think the sooner you do it, the better. But Anna Mageddon says, Honey, I love you and I have to tell you something. I don't want to drop a bomb on you, but I don't want to keep this from you either. I'm struggling with. It goes on to say, you can get through this. It sounds like you're well on your way in taking the first steps. You should be proud. Good luck. Sanguinea says, you're going to hit him with something hard, with both barrels. Drug addiction is a brutal thing for the partners of addicts to deal with, as well as the addicts themselves. There's no softening this. It's a big deal, but you can angle this in the right direction. It's one thing to admit an addiction, but don't leave it there. Be ready to do something about it. As soon as you read these responses, get searching, look up your local support groups, counseling services, anything relevant to the process of kicking the drug habit. I'm sure other subreddits are set up for that as well. Begin the process now. This is an all important step. Admitting the problem is good, but admitting and being ready to tackle it is better. I'm not saying rush out the door this instant and rock up at a local center, but know what your options are. Know who can help. Knowledge is so much. 
Then when your husband is there, you can come out and say you have this problem and more. This is what you need to do to correct it. Hippo Party says it might be terrifying to do it, but meth is scary as shit. I think you should maybe write him a letter if you're worried and you won't be able to go through with telling him. You took the first step by posting here and admitting it to all of us. If you tell him, he can support you through this and you won't have to be alone in going through it. Lastly, hugs. Hope you can figure things out for yourself. And one more from Sister Golden Hair who says, Hi there. I work in addiction so I have a little bit of insight into this area of things. With regard to where you are located geographically, your access to addiction treatment and counseling will be different to where I am, so factor that in the advice I'm about to give. Firstly, good on you for having the insight into having an addiction and recognizing you need help. Meth is a hell of a drug. I'm certain there is context to why you started using and why it's getting out of control. You aren't a junkie, you aren't a bad person, you just made some choices that have led to where you are, and you have some choices to make to get you out of it. Dangerously simplistic, but that's the nuts and bolts of it. In terms of telling your husband, you could approach it from a health point of view. You could book time with a counselor or your GP if you trust them. At least half an hour to an hour and even go see them first before you bring it to your husband. Tell your partner that you've booked an appointment that you really need him to attend. Tell him it's about your mental health if you must. We treat addictions as part of mental health services here. Ask a professional for some information specifically for family members or drug users. It exists and tell him together. Let him ask any questions he needs to ask. So then OP comes in with their first update, which says, thank you for the encouraging and kind responses. I told him. He didn't know. He knew something was wrong, but thought it had to do with depression. My cousin and best friend committed suicide last year. Her birthday was in April and next month is the anniversary of her death. It makes sense he attributed anything different to something like depression. He was concerned about an eating disorder too. Also, I encapsulated the meth and took it orally. It was like a strong Adderall. I wasn't behaving like a stereotypical tweaker, like the people you see on TV. I'm only adding this to clarify the situation, not to minimize it. It's still meth, but I understand why he didn't suspect it. I'm also the last person anyone would suspect of doing drugs, especially meth. I used to teach kindergarten to give you some perspective. Other than experimenting in my late teens and my current situation, I've never really used drugs or alcohol. I'm so grateful for this man. He might be an actual saint. When I told him, he just put his arms around me and said, I love you. Everything's going to be okay. I just cried and cried. Then he started crying and I honestly wanted to die. He was very concerned about my health. He asked a few questions about headaches and my vision and wanted to check my blood pressure. He made me give him the drugs. He had a really hard time believing I was doing meth until he saw it. Then we talked some more and that's when he told me he was concerned about my mental health but never suspected drugs. He definitely had questions and I answered everything honestly. I made sure to take responsibility and chose my words carefully. This is the result of my bad decisions and nothing else. It's been a rough and emotional night, but I feel better after telling him. It was easier than I thought. I wish I hadn't waited so long to tell him. I feel so much better about quitting now, like stronger in a way, and it's such a relief to have this off my chest. It's like I can finally move forward. We talked a little bit about how to handle things, but didn't make any solid plans yet. I'm contacting my old therapist tomorrow to make an appointment. I'm considering something like NA, but I'm not religious, so we'll see. I'm open to suggestions if anyone has them. Update two, I just want to say thank you again for the supportive comments and messages. I appreciate all of you taking the time to reply or write to me. I've read everything, but I'm tired and anxious and haven't been able to respond to everyone. Sorry about that. My husband is at work now and I'm waiting for nine o'clock to call the therapist's office. I'm reading up on NA in the meantime. Final update. I've been sober since May 22, 2017. It's been almost a year and a half since I posted. I was a mess that day and really overwhelmed. You all gave me the push I needed to gather my courage and tell my husband about my drug use. Thank you so much for that. I mean it. I knew he needed to know, but I couldn't make myself follow through until I received encouragement from a bunch of internet strangers. I hate to think what might have happened had I continued hiding it from him. 
my husband has been supportive, compassionate, and kind throughout my recovery. I wouldn't be doing so well today without him. There aren't words to express how much I love him and how grateful I am to be married to such a good man. With the help of my therapist, I was able to open up to him about being raped. It was violent, ugly, all around a horrible incident, and the effect PTSD had on me. It's an explanation, not an excuse for the drug use. We've had to work on rebuilding trust and I realize that's going to take time. He still prefers I stay home most of the time as he has reservations about new friends. Both are totally reasonable in my opinion. I understand his feelings completely. We do more together now and I feel more included in his life, which has really helped my mental health. Every day I do my best to prove my love, appreciation and respect for him. We're both continually putting effort into ourselves and our marriage. As for my recovery, I honestly feel a little weird calling it that. I didn't use long term and didn't face many of the same challenges as other addicts, but I am an addict and I'm always aware of that and I realize I'm no different fundamentally from someone doing heroin on the streets. Drugs were a distraction and a way to escape bad memories and nightmares. They were also part of my social life as my only friend in the area, at the time, used them too. Once I accepted that I had and will always have PTSD and began getting proper treatment, I didn't want anything to do with drugs. I'm extremely lucky and thankful I stopped when I did. Dealing with my mental health hasn't been easy. Last August, I went to a behavioral health hospital for six days. I didn't want to go at first, but my husband and therapist convinced me I needed to. They were right. I felt much better afterwards and I met a few people like me whilst I was there. It made me feel better to know I wasn't alone. People can say that you aren't alone all the time, but it's different when you actually experience it. My husband and I went to couples therapy for three months. It helped us quite a bit. We realized we needed to talk about things that hadn't occurred to either of us before sitting down with a therapist. It helped me understand his feelings and how my drug use and concealing it from him affected him. It helped him understand why I did what I did. It gave us a safe space to talk that eventually led to better communication in private. I'm still seeing a therapist twice a month and attend group therapy once a month. I'm stable, healthy and happy. I love my life and I'm really excited about the future expecting a baby in the spring and I can't wait to be a mum. I'm so looking forward to raising a family with my husband. Life is good. Thanks again, r slash relationships. Oh my word, what an update. Don't get, don't cry Mark. Calm down. And I always feel really patronizing when I say this and I don't mean it in that way but I'm just so proud of that person to to go through what they've been through and 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 face the challenges that they faced and now their life is looking so much better and it sounds wonderful congratulations on your baby as well i love an ending like that but what do you guys make of this one let me know your thoughts in the comments below and let's move on to another story and this next story comes from a throwaway account who asks am i the arsehole for telling my ex his lack of money is not my issue i 36 female have a daughter, Sadie, 12, with my ex-husband, John, 39. We got divorced five years ago and I have primary custody while he sees her two weekends a month. Last year, he got married to Amanda, who has sole custody of her kids, 10 and 8 female, from a previous marriage. Amanda is a stay-at-home mum, not for any health reasons or so on. She just doesn't want to work, while John works at a 9 to 5. He makes good money to support them, but not enough to live in luxury. I have a much higher paying job. Since it's just me and Sadie, I make sure she has the best possible life. She goes to a private school, set up a college fund, and she has much better things than most kids, phone, clothes, etc. I still manage to raise her to be humble and not take things for granted, and she's one of the hardest working people I know, always making sure to get good grades and keep her room tidy. Well, the last few times she came back after a weekend at John's. I noticed that the clothes she was bringing back in her duffels are A, not her size, and B, much cheaper and poorer quality than what I usually buy for her. I asked her what that is and she told me that while she's at her dad's, Amanda takes away her nice clothes and gives them to her kids while Sadie gets the clothes they buy from Target. 
I asked her if she wanted them back and she said she didn't mind sharing since all her favorite clothes were kept here. The problem came when I went to pick her up last weekend. I had a business meeting and couldn't drive her over. So Amanda offered to just pick Sadie up from school, which hadn't happened before. When I got there on Sunday, John and Amanda asked me to sit down with them and when Sadie came to hug me, Amanda sent her to her room quite harshly, saying her punishment wasn't over yet. I was confused because Sadie very rarely misbehaves. They sat me down in the kitchen and said it was unfair for Sadie to be going to a private school while her kids go to a public one. So they decided that Sadie would be pulled out of private school and put in the same school as the girls. They also said I should keep up Sadie's punishment because when they told her, she blew up at them, told them it wasn't fair, and yelled at Amanda and her kids weren't even her real family, that all they did was steal. I told them in no uncertain terms to fuck off. I would not be pulling my child out of a school she likes, away from her friends because they can't afford it. I told them they could easily make as much money as me if Amanda started working in her field because she has the qualifications and the job market is very good. I told them their money problems are not my issue and if Sadie's items get stolen again or they try to pull her out of school, I'll be taking this to court. They've been blowing up my phone ever since, calling me a selfish asshole. and after telling the story to a friend, he told me I was rubbing my success in their face but I still don't feel like I did anything wrong. Still, am I the asshole? Edit, I contacted my lawyer and we're starting the process of obtaining full custody. I'm taking Sadie to a therapist so I can get permission to keep her with me, at least until the courts make their decision. The next visit isn't for another couple of weeks, so assuming that everything goes according to plan, she shouldn't have to go back there unless she wants to. And we'll start off with Groves, who says not the arsehole and I would make the school aware that any decisions about your daughter need to go through you so he doesn't just do it behind your back. Opie replies saying first thing I did after dropping Sadie off at school. My kids not losing a good opportunity because of them. No regret says, hi, I think as a loving mother you know the answer deep down in your heart. Not the arsehole and well done for protecting your daughter. Keep this mama bear mood switched on. Out of all the adults involved, you're the only one fighting your kid's corner. Your daughter really needs your support in this situation. The only thing that I would have done differently is that I have taken them to court already for stolen clothes. You let it go and now it keeps escalating because the real motive here is intense jealousy combined with laziness and questionable morality. To steal clothes instead of working. Meh, it makes me want to vomit. These people are adults and won't change, so reasoning with them is not a viable option. I would involve child protection services to start with because stealing clothes and pulling your daughter out of school against her will and without consulting her mother is abuse. Please report it or your child will get more of the same. Also, I'm not sure if your daughter benefits from seeing her father. Even during the short time they're together, he manages to abuse her. It's another thing to discuss with child protection. I would do it without warning and any previous talks with their dad or Amanda so that they wouldn't be able to prepare on how to dodge it. What you're describing is serious and it's time to take action. Good luck and please take good care of yourself. Your lovely daughter needs your help right now. OP replies in, thank you so much for your comment. I'm really considering that but haven't done it up until now because I didn't want to ruin Sadie's relationship with her father. As it is, she decided she doesn't want to go back so I'm going to take quite a lot of pleasure in getting my revenge for what they did to her. Oi, see you next Tuesday, he says, not the arsehole. Start court proceedings now. Send her to dads with clothes from Target. Everything through text and email. If you live in Canada, at 12 your daughter can refuse to go on her own accord, regardless of court order. Get your daughter to a therapist to talk this out. Her stepmother is abusing her emotionally and psychologically. Your ex is allowing it to happen. Hopi replies saying scheduled a meeting with my lawyer after I got over a bit of doubt my friend put in me. As of right now, I can't do anything to stop Sadie from going and I can be taken to court myself if I don't send her. But I'm hoping there's a way to bypass that until our next court hearing. I'll find that out with my lawyer. And one more from Astronaut No who says not the arse or the fact that your ex-husband and his wife are pieces of crap. It doesn't surprise me that this is their reaction. But you have a friend that would respond that way is no bueno. Friends are supposed to have your back. You work hard for your success and being successful is not rubbing it in someone else's face. OP replies saying yeah, I don't see us talking much after this, surprisingly. 
The only reason I even listened is because we've known each other for so long, but with all these comments, I feel justified in my decision to cut him off. Now, what would you do in this situation if you was OP? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Now, just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories. Your love, support, and time always means the absolute world to me. So thank you so, so much for getting involved. Don't forget, we got the podcast as well, mark-narrations.com, where you can pick out your favorite podcast there, or it's on Spotify, Apple, Acast. Pick your favorite one. I'm sure it's there as well. And if not, just let me know and I'll see what I can do. And hopefully I will see you in the next one. Take care, guys. And much love. Yeah, man, I remember being so naive when life was good, weather and palm trees. Back in the day, you were everything I need. But then along came a time when you crushed my dreams. Oh, yeah, you played me like a fool when you made me believe that the line between love wasn't thick enough to read. Oh, yeah, you see, we end up spare crime everywhere. You're selling false hope because you just don't care. Nah, uh, you just don't care. Nah, 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 you just don't, just don't.